Hey kids, it's time for a, your favorite show. It's the Nexicon. Is it I'm your Casey favorite show? I'm sorry, I'm Michael Gaines. I'm, I'm <laughs> Michael. Let's interrupt us. Yes, sometimes. <laughs> sometimes. I'm sorry. Yes, this is your favorite show, the Nexicon, where we talk about everything that we want to because we can. Damn it. Yeah, because we're big nerds. <laughs> we're big nerds. <laughs> this is the big nerd show. Mm-hmm. Not to be confused with Big Nerd Ranch. Oh, that's true. The Big Nerd Ranch. Because mm-hmm. Aaron would be mad. He would be. But Aaron, Aaron's cool. I met Aaron. Of course you did. <laughs> yeah, for those of you that don't know, Casey and I have this ongoing thing about who I've met and she hasn't. <laughs> it's like you and everybody else. Like, oh, hey, by the way, Casey, I also <laughs> met, you know, Leah Laporte. And then I met, you know... And then, and then, and then and other people have sort of here that I'd be drooling over the, to meet. The weird thing is that you live in California, and yet, I mean, and first off, like Eric, Eric he Rice has jumped into it. There. It's like, oh, Casey, you know, look who took this picture, and then Langley's on it. Everybody's in on it. Yeah. <laughs> All know. these people that we've met, and, and Casey hasn't, and you, you just you live right there. Makes me a sad panda. Speaking of panda, no, we'll get to pandas later. <laughs> well, let's let's first talk about news. And originally, we were going to talk about happy news, but the happy news turned into very, very sad news. It did. Uh, it did. You. Um, well, let let's first talk about the happy aspect of it. You went to see Dark Knight. I just couldn't pull the family out of the house to to see it yet. So I haven't actually seen it yet. I heard it was amazing. So t- tell us what you think about it. Um, yeah, it's definitely amazeballs. It, I mean, for starters, it's almost three hours long, and so a lot of people were complaining about that. But really, they could have made this four hours, five hours. I think anybody who went to see it this weekend, which was a buttload of people, Mm -hmm. would have sat through that. They had that much story to tell, and there wasn't ever really a slow point. It was Mm jam-packed from beginning to end, and they got so much info out it was it was perfect i haven't seen it when i saw that it was three hours long i was actually happy because if if a comic book movie is three hours long that means either somebody is incredibly stupid and just made a super uh, superhero movie that's three hours long which i didn't think because you know nolan and everybody <laughs> wouldn't do that yeah. So my second thought was, this has got to be an amazing film because nobody it's, would allow a three-hour comic book movie unless it was Amazeballs. And so I'm trying to get... It's it's like everybody in the house always has something to do someday and we just can't get all four people to go. And yeah, you were suggesting uh, that I should go by myself. I'm like, nah, I might do that. No, no, <laughs> no. I'm saying don't go by yourself. Go with your girls. Yeah. Or, you know, if you can't get everybody together, I'm sure you wouldn't mind seeing it more than once. Break oh, it no. up. You know? No. Go with one person, go with another, and then. <laughs> yeah, so I, I may, I don't know, maybe try and sneak out on Saturday afternoon or something and see it. But um, Yeah, it's, it's jam-packed and... It's just a great script. I mean, half the movie they spend breaking Batman pretty much, and then mm-hmm. the other half is him building himself back up and sure. you know winning the day. Which is what or, a hero movie guess, is supposed spoilers. to be about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, um, but they really, I mean, they really break him down. You know, it's not like he he makes one attempt and fails and he's like, oh, you know, they, I mean, anything that can freaking go wrong does for, in, for every character in this movie. Mm -hmm. And you're just like, you're heartbroken for them. You're, you know, just, oh my God, pulling for every character in this movie. (laughs) No spoilers. It's fantastic. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, that might've been a whole month. No, 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 that wasn't much. No, I wasn't a spoiler. (laughs) Um, but then the 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 the, uh, the negative side of this whole thing is that some yeah. pinhead decided. And if you haven't heard the news by now, I don't know where you've been. I don't know where you've been. This happened right at the midnight release last Thursday night, Friday yeah. morning, in uh, Aurora, Colorado. Colorado. Um, some douchebag had to ruin the whole thing for everybody, really, and ruin like sales. And they didn't. 
really even want to announce box office sales over the weekend because yeah. of tragedy that this, started the whole weekend off. This pinhead decided that he was going to go through the uh, the emergency exit, send in a smoke bomb, and then start shooting people. He shot 12, injured, what was it, 50 or 56? I don't remember, but uh, it was, it was, it doesn't matter. It was a lot. It was, it was, it was senseless and stupid and open fired with a semi automatic. I, I, I just can't even, I can't even imagine what goes through people's heads when they, when, when this happens. It's just so far beyond most people to comprehend. And, and so now what I'm seeing is, um, first off, I saw his arraignment. I think that's what it's called. It's an arraignment where they where they bring him yeah, in front. He was, hearing. he looked, and, and this is days after it happened, he looked messed up. And I'm not talking about the fact that he had like the hair. He called himself the Joker. He had like the orange hair and everything. Just but don't he even looked, up. yeah, he looked like he was, he was tired and zoning out and his head was going back. Like and his eyes are rolling back into his head and he just, he just looked like a mess. And mm-hmm. and this this guy and this this is what surprises me the most about this. This guy was a PhD student. Yeah, he wasn't a um, he wasn't a dumb kid. He was actually um, pretty bright, and they said that. Um, well, I mean, just that that he was really smart and you know top of his class and everything, and it's just really sad. And you you know wonder what must. For somebody like that, what must have happened to them or is going through their head for, you know, for something like this to make sense? It, it can't make sense. It does, see, well, it doesn't I mean, make, make sense, sense to, to us. Them. It must yeah. be, I don't know, at some point you must be so turned around in your own life and in mm-hmm. your own head for something like this to seem like a good idea. It's something had to, uh, look, I'm not a shrink, not by any means. I'm a software engineer, but... Something had to have made him snap. Yeah. Um, but this was in the works for months, apparently. And and the and this is the sad part about it. I read about this today. Is that he sent a uh, a notebook to one of his professors at school, detailing what he was going to do, and the mail was sitting in the professor's inbox. And they found it today. So it, it's one oh, of those things. Where, wow. Like it, it's not one of those things where oh, if I had checked my mail, I could have prevented like this. Well, I mean, who knew? Who knew? It was yeah, just yeah. It, was, it was just one of those unfortunate things that happened. But um, I mean, for one thing, you know, you uh, the, the, what bothers me is that I always thought of the theater as sort of like the 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 way you sort of escape. And for someone to mm-hmm. to use not only a, a theater, but to use Batman as an excuse to do all this, yeah, yeah, it it's it's just absolutely. And at terrible. a midnight release, like this is just going to have widespread implications. Not just you know people, um, you know, second guessing whether or not to even go to the movies, but to go to you know midnight releases. Because I mean, up until now, though, that has been kind of a a big cult thing Mm -hmm. and so now that that's going to you know kind of be taken away a little bit as much as well as you know people like i said second guessing even going to the theater in the first place um there were a lot of people that didn't go this weekend opening weekend to see the dark knight you know maybe not in totally in fear but also in uh respect to um those in aurora yeah um I, Christian Bale visited some of the um, the victims this weekend. Um, I thought President was, Obama did. President too. Obama did. I thought that was a, a, a nice touch. Um, mm-hmm. And and the thing is that Christian Bale said that he's there on his own accord, not representing Warner Brothers. Uh, Warner Brothers yeah. is donating money to the victims' families. I, th- this whole thing has has just completely turned so many lives around all because of one person deciding that they were going to snap and do this horrible thing. And you're right. It's like the long-term implications of this. I've been reading that, um, Batman costumes are now banned at AMC theaters, Mm. which doesn't make any sense because the guy, was he wearing a Batman costume? I, I, I read conflicting stories about that. No, he wasn't. He was calling himself the Joker, but, um, to ban a Batman costume, because you know how you and I both know how 
important dressing up is yeah to, to right a lot of and i even saw when i went on sunday i went to an edwards theater but i saw a couple of people dressed up i mean they weren't like official batman costumes they were like homemade so they were wearing like a shirt yeah. and a cape and gloves maybe but there are a few people who dressed up even on sunday night and i mean i saw definitely a, a heightened security presence mm-hmm. at the theater but um that was about it. it it's just sad and you know our thoughts are with the the victims and their families and and, and everything yeah, indeed. And i i don't know the i don't know what's going to happen metal detectors at movie theaters now even though it happened through the back door are we going to see metal detectors at movie theaters who knows yeah, um is yeah, this going to be the good. last push um to bring first run uh theatrical runs to the home to the home yeah that would be a good idea it's entirely possible where, where people will just not want to go to the theater anymore out of fear. Yeah. Um, yeah. But then again, I always think of it this way. I've been going to the theater since I was a kid. It's a long time. How <laughs> yeah, often I know. Does you're the, old. <laughs> how often does this happen? It doesn't happen very often. When I was growing up, there was a theater by, well, not near me. There was a theater in my area that I used to go to. It's where I saw aliens. And mm-hmm. um, it closed because of all the gang problems down there. Um, mm. This is the um, I want uh, Amboy Cinema in New Jersey um, uh, in Perth Amboy South Amboy I believe and um, and yeah there are, there are a lot of problems there they started after I had sort of left to go to college so I never really saw them but um, yeah that theater to this day it was it was closed I think around nineteen oh, we saw Fantasia there so that had to have been around eighty nine it closed mm. about a year after that um. And so it's yeah. been abandoned. It's been sitting there abandoned for over 20 years now. Um, it's still closed. Awesome. Um, <laughs> so so these things do have you know, implementation or implications. And uh, I don't know. Mm, we'll, yeah. we'll, um, well, let's, let's, let's move on move to on. more yeah. happier theatrical uh, thing. Uh, I talked <laughs> about this uh, on this A better theater track. experience. Um, I went, to, I'm not going to talk too much about it because I spoke about it on this week in track, but um, I went to see uh, two episodes of the next generation, Star Trek next generation uh, shown in a movie theater. Now, the reason why they did this is because the, uh, the next generation was shot on 35 millimeter, but then it was post edited on video. So what they did was they rescanned every single episode. Uh, all well, I think it's 179 episodes in Next Generation, and uh, redid the effects. And they said, "Well, as a promotion, why don't we just show it in the theaters?" And I tell you, it held up in a movie theater. It was nice. very surprising. Uh, I I thought that it would feel like you're watching TV on a big screen, but it. Other than the fact that they had to keep the four by three aspect ratio, they they couldn't fill it out. Yeah. Um, yeah. it it really held up, and everything just looks a hundred times better than it did on video. Nice. So so that was a lot of fun. So if you want to hear more about that, I talked about it on uh, on this week in track the last episode. But uh, for those people that were listening to the quest log, um, we as I said, we we're going to roll the the quest log into this show. So now mm-hmm. we're going to talk about the gaming part of of the uh, of the quest log, and I, ha- I have music for this. <gasps> Music, I love it. So, so this is music from Guild Wars Two. Casey and I played Guild Wars Two over the weekend, the last beta. Why don't don't you tell everybody what you thought about it and how you came to that? So, yeah, I played um, for like eight minutes during the the last (laughs) last beta. I got in right at the very very end, and it was so sluggish that I really didn't get to experience anything and then it was over. Um, but this weekend I played the entire time from Friday to Sunday mm-hmm. and um, Sorry. really kind of fell in love with it, with this game. I mean, for sure I'm going to be all over it at launch. But um, at first I wasn't sure about the art style because it is kind of a, a painterly art style to the game the whole Mm -hmm. um the interface uh is all really 2d where you're kind of more used to that 3d um i don't know interface that kind of pops now with wow and ddo and Mm -hmm. any other game um this is the first one that 
has more of a 2D interface and a lot of like brush strokes everywhere and it's very like I said painterly and I wasn't sure that I really liked that at first and it kind of bugged me um, and where they have the uh, the cutscenes for uh, quests when you're talking to NPCs you know it it kind of takes over the whole screen and you have the NPC and your character pop up and they talk and there's mm -hmm. dialogue and and goodness um, I just I really wasn't sure about all the game when I first started playing it and you know a couple hours in I was still like uh, I don't know it's kind of whatever but like I think day two it really clicked for me and I can't even say why <laughs> just suddenly I love the game um and i think it might have had something to do with the classes i was playing mm -hmm. and the race and the area i don't know um casey but, and i were talking about the game um the i think it was with thursday or friday night whatever night it was and and i said it's because i've been a big fan i mean if anybody who's been, been following me on twitter knows that i've been just gushing about this game and then casey says well it's okay i don't know if i like the art style just like you just said i think it was the next day you sent me text messages like, "Oh my God, I get it now," or something. You said something like that, where you yeah. you finally said that you 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 love it, and um and now you're having I, withdrawals like it, I have. Yeah, I'm totally going through withdrawals. I can't wait for launch. Um, I really I like a lot of the classes, and it mm -hmm. it took me a while to you know I had play through everything, and it took me a while to really find one that I think I might want to play for main. But I love the mechanics in this game. I love that there's no NPC standing around with exclamation points above their head, you know, for quests. <laughs> you just go into an area, and much like um, Warhammer and Rift, they're mainly all area quests that mm -hmm. you know just kind of show up on your radar when you go into the area and you do the quest and and that's about it you go to the next area there's world events that happen in each area in addition to the area quests mm -hmm. but it's it's a whole lot of um exploration and and moving around there's no like go to npc to npc to npc it's yeah. it's got a much better flow to it and it there's not like a static structure either where you have to go here and then the NPC sends you to this place that you have to go to. Mm -hmm. You really start and stop anywhere you want. Right. The and the whole mechanic with switching um, switching weapons mm -hmm. that each weapon has a completely different set of skills, mm -hmm. that is fantastic. Yeah, the, um, the way the game is set up is that it's it's almost as if exploration is your is your um, your goal, is that you want to move from spot to spot to spot because that's where all the quests are. When you look on your map, there's a, there's a, a heart with an orange outline and, and black inside. That, that heart is where the, NP, the center NPC is for the quests you have to do for that area. And then when you're done, the heart turns full orange and then that that um that NPC should have things for you to buy. With but you don't even have to you don't have to go to that NPC to start it and you don't even have no, to you talk don't. to them. You it's can great. just you know, you don't have to really talk to much of anybody. Mm -hmm. uh, I like that. And, and they make it super easy to switch between areas too. Mm -hmm. So if you don't, if you start a human, you don't want to run through the human area. There's a portal right there in town you can go to as a level one, and then go to some other starting area mm -hmm. real easily. Um, oh, and then you also get a lot of XP for uncovering areas too. Mm -hmm. So sure. again, exploration is is the name of the game here. Yeah. The um there are a couple things that I want to bring up. Um, I played a human in the beginning because you can only play a human or um, those, those little guys. I forgot what they were called. Um, but Casey and I played Silvari. And these uh -huh. are like the plant people. And the place was just nothing less than gorgeous. Um, I'm a, The thing is, is that I got so used to... Um, to the main area in the humans, uh, the the human area, that I don't know if I want to play. So I'll probably play Silvari, but um, the the main town in uh, in the human area is just gorgeous and it's just I, lively. Yeah. And did you play it this weekend? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the human town is definitely my favorite. And even when I started other races, I brought them back to um, Queenstown. Oh, you did. 
Um, cause I like that town the best. I really didn't care for the Silvari town. Yeah. The I main town. Either. And, um, Divinity's the, Reach. That's what it's called. Divinity's Reach. Yes, yes. Um, the, the Norns town and the, um, Asura's town is pretty cool cause it's all, um, very like alien and techy and, um, really interesting. But I think, um, Divinity's Reach is definitely the best area. So, I mean, it's it's a couple of weeks until release. It's it's a little more than a month. What do you think you're mm-hmm. going to do? Start a Silvari and then maybe... Move? I think I might start a human, yeah, actually. I think I'm going to uh, do that, too. A human, and I think I'm going to go Necro. See, what I'm going to do... All right. Um, uh, ArenaNet announced the other day that you have until July 31st to log into EQ... My EQ. To um, a Guild Wars 1, and when you do that, it reserves your name. Uh, and I don't... My two accounts are linked. I think I started a new account, oh, did you? so linked with the beta is different because I couldn't get access to my Guild Wars One account. Oh, okay. Um, I hmm. couldn't change the password and I couldn't get access to it, um, so that the beta account is different. Yeah. So my but, my Guild Wars One and Two accounts are linked, and and the reason I bring this up is because now my name is reserved from Guild Wars One. Um, she was a necro, or is I should say she is a necro. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to wind up going elementalist because I spent so much time playing an elementalist. I played a guardian in this last beta, and I went, eh, it's not quite my thing. Um, I felt a little gimped because they really like they're categorized as a tank class, Mm -hmm. but with different um with different weapons yeah like their class really i think is the has the most dramatic range of abilities Mm -hmm. you know you have a guardian a scepter or a staff and they're a legit caster right Um, but you you have to get one and they're you know dps uh and then a sword short and a shield and they're a tank i mean they're not going to do high damage because they're a tank class Mm -hmm. but um, they can legitimately heal and be a, a good support class with a scepter or a staff. Um, but yeah. elementals are nice because they can switch between the five elements. So it's not just that their skills change with weapons, but they also change depending on what element you have selected. Yeah, the, so I played the Guardian, and by default they give you, um, no, I don't know what kind, I think it's a mace is the weapon that they give you. And so the abilities that you have are more of like, I'm I'm putting a shield over everybody or something like that. What I really wanted to do was was do um, heal casting like uh, like a priest or some such. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to start elementalist. Um, and yeah, Casey was saying that you can switch between your your elements. And so you got earth, wind, fire, and water. And then depending on what you're attacking, and then you Captain Planet. So that really helps out. Yeah. So it's. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to go elementalist and then I'm going to switch to this um, uh, guardian for my next one or maybe a necro I don't know because I played a necro in, in uh, Guild Wars one. But I like having all the pets as the necro. That's nice. Oh, that's right. You guys get the pets. Um, from playing Guild Wars, how much did you play in Guild Wars one? Guild Wars one, I played a lot, but I played monk mainly. Okay. Just not. A thing in Guild Wars 2, so... No. <laughs> uh, my, my point is, is that Guild Wars 1 was a little strange because they had sort of like these instance versions of the of the yeah. overworld, which I never quite got used to. It was... A- yeah, it was, it was... It felt really lonely and it didn't feel like a true MMO. Mm-hmm. This Guild Wars 2 really feels like a true MMO. Yeah. I think that it's going to give a lot of games a run for their money. I don't think mm-hmm. it's going to pull a lot of people away from WoW. I think it's, I don't think it's going to be the WoW killer that no, everyone's no, looking for. No, no, no. But, but because it's free to play, I think people are at least going to invest in buying it. Yeah, exactly. Um, what we're seeing, though, is we're seeing, I think, a little too many fantasy-based MMOs. So we've got EQ1, EQ2, WoW, um, DDO, uh, Warhammer is still around, right? Uh, Lord of the Rings Online, Terra, uh, now Terra. Guild Wars 1, Guild Wars 2. So that's Aeon. 9 off the top of my head. Aeon? A- no, Aeon. So there, that's 10. Um, it seems to me like with so many of them that um, 
what's going to make one better than the other or appeal more is what it gives the users, the players to do. Yeah, and what differentiates itself from, you know, the rest of the pack. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, I think what what also is going to attract players is or I should say what's what's going to push players away is what limitations does this game have? And, and you and I have have talked about this before is that this goofy flying limitation in Ion which which is actually yeah. one of the things that pushed me away from the game is that they tell you, look, you can fly in the game, and then you actually get in the game, and you can only fly for like twenty seconds, and you're trying to farm stuff a hundred feet. In yeah, the air. it wasn't even just a limitation of the game; it was a major limitation, which was also the major selling point. Right. You can't have both. Like, don't make your major selling point also hugely limited. Right. That's just crazy. You're shooting yourself in both feet at that mm -hmm. point. I haven't gotten to a high level in uh, Guild Wars 2 in the beta. Um, you and I were both playing Terra. You you stopped playing, right? Yeah, I haven't played since before when we went to Secret World. And yeah. I stopped playing Terra. I stopped Terra. playing Terra just because it... I How did I feel about this game? I felt that... First off, I, I know this is going to sound a little weird, but everybody in the game is a little too pretty. <laughs> Like it was a gorgeous game. Visually, it was a gorgeous game, but everybody was like, "I'm brushing my hair back." Well, it's and, and very sexual. Like the whole game, all the characters, the women especially, move in like, you know, if they have to crawl or climb up a ladder, it's just in the most grindy, <laughs> sexy way, you know. And it just didn't feel right. Like, like you're you're a warrior on your side, and 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 you're brushing your hair, and and do I look right? And I am awesome, and it, it's the whole thing just <laughs> just felt like a, a giant contradiction, and um, it it just I just felt like oh here's another grindy game, and what am I going to get out of it when I get to max level? So I think what did we get to? I got to twenty four, you got to twenty six or twenty eight or something like that, well, and I just went yeah. I didn't feel too grindy, but um, I don't know. I liked how their um, their instances were with the uh, the faster gameplay in the instance. Mm -hmm. um, I really yes. kind of liked that, and um, yeah, yeah. So, but Guild, what EQ two just had a patch. <laughs> you know, I was um, I knew this was coming, <laughs> but because so much has been going on lately, I've been so busy that. I completely yep. forgot that like the, the month of July is just flying by. And the one yeah. thing that I wanted to do is I wanted to take some pictures of Willowwood before. Well, it's still there. But you have to do um, a quest in order to get into Willowwood. And then like the houses are burning or something. Like, that. like it's not oh. it's not your father's Willowwood is, is basically what I'm saying. <laughs> it's, um, it's sort of like when you go to um, Aberdeen. Not Aberdeen. Um, Astronar in WoW now. Where everything's yeah. on fire and, and things like it's not the same. Yeah, yeah. Um, Even Stormwind is still like all in pieces. Like when are they going to? <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I don't know. Begin the reconstruction effort of Stormwind. Yeah. How long does it take to to fix a damn uh, uh, tower? Anyway, um, mm -hmm. what what Sony did last year is they um, they merged some of the zones in Freeport, which was the evil city in uh, mm -hmm. in EverQuest Two, and and the reason why they did that is because the the city was split into two sections, and then they had their own little suburbs. No, um, there's four major sections, was it and four? then oh, that's right. In um, they have yeah. north, south, east, and west Freeport, mm -hmm. just like um, Quenos or Kinos, yes. and I always called it Quenos for I know. like. And then I actually heard it, and it's Kinos, so I still call it Quenos. Anyways, um, did you know what? Do you know what Kinos means? No. Read it, read it backwards. Sun. Sony EQ. Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> so, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt um, but yeah, you. Yeah, no. Both uh, Kinos and Freeport have like a bazillion zones to them you know with teeny tiny little suburbs and then their newbie offshoots um i i think well they're both their respective capitals for mm -hmm. each side so it makes sense that they're the biggest towns but yeah um i don't know merging them is merging some of those to make it a little bit smaller isn't a bad idea 
Yeah, what they did with Kinos, uh, because I, I have uh, a character that plays on, on the, the good side, so to speak. Uh, they, uh, they merged North and South Kinos. But mm-hmm. they what they didn't do was um, they didn't merge in Kinos Harbor, and I'm blanking on the other one that's a little north. Um, I can't remember. It's um, not Eldar. Is it Eldar Grove? Is that what I'm thinking of? I don't remember. I think there is an Elder Grove. But I don't know if I that's mean, the place. I there's definitely a of. Grove zone, and then there's <laughs> the sewers, and then there's the swamp zone, and then right. there's Oakley's Harbor, Forest. and then there's some like other crap. Yeah, so now um, the way that I have it set up is that some of the suburbs, well, no, all the suburbs, I think all of them are gone except for Willowwood, which you can only get in through as a quest. I haven't actually gone in yet. I see. Um, so Castleview Hamlet, Bulbashire, um, yeah. they're, they're inaccessible now, which I, I, oh, darn. I don't like that. Or if they are accessible, I couldn't figure out how to get in there because when you go up I to the door, there's we'll find nothing those, to click like, on. those like the slums of, uh, of the area. <laughs> yeah, they're oh, in the slums. No. They're, they're 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 cleaning up the area, you know, so they can get some higher market housing in. They want to, you know, brush <laughs> out the bad element and get some more, um, you know, condos in. So maybe. I suppose you can think of it that way. I never thought of it that way, but they're the starting <laughs> areas. But you know, as a as a, a, a wood elf, mine was Willowwood, so I sort of have this affinity towards Willowwood. And now it's gone, um, unless you get the quest. And like I said, it's it's not the same. So people are saying that it's great, but then there are uh, there are a lot of people like myself on the forums that are saying, uh, can we sort of find a way to get back to the old ones? Because unless you have screenshots, they're gone. And there are people, and I can understand this, they're very sentimental about being in the same area for eight years. No, man. Well, there's your problem. If you're sitting around in Willowwood for eight years, clearly you need to get out and experience some other zones. I mean, you need it's time to move on. It's time to grow up and move out of your freaking wood elf parents' house and uh, you know, go see Hala or, you know, Hallis, I mean, or whatever. There's other zones out there. There are there are other zones out there. I'm level ninety, I've only been out of Willowwood once. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I leveled up by chopping wood. Um, actually, in, in EQ, you can do that. Um, I, I leveled up by swimming in the harbor. <laughs> right? Uh, they also made some some other major changes, and, and this is very important for those people like myself that were just nothing but pissed off about PvP gear, is um, they now allow PvP to be based on PvE gear stats. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah, I How know. How can they do that? I I didn't I didn't they try it out like myself. They are remaking the whole PVP MMO dynamic. This well, is <laughs> this is an outrage. What the hell? <laughs> well, if if anybody's played on the PVP server in EQ2, um it's it's been nothing but yeah. a living living hell. You no, know, it's actually my main server. Uh, yeah, and and I transferred <laughs> off of it. I couldn't stand it anymore because I would just like step foot onto Antonica, whack dead. Whack dead. Yeah, by somebody who was like 30 levels beneath me. And you, you still play You that? just kind of get over it. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, God. I forget the server's name. It's like a four-letter word. Nagaf- but, oh, uh, oh, no. It's it's, it's all uh, Nagafin now. I think it is Nagafin. Um, yeah. But, I mean, before they merged them all, I think we were on there even before then because it was like it was the biggest pop uh, PvP server yeah. and um, forever and ever. And so that was that's our main, um, you know, all my high level mains are on there, mm-hmm. and you just you kind of deal with it because I I don't really like PvP, and you know if I'm out questing and I get ganked a couple times, and well then I guess it's gonna be time to go level carpeting. Well, <laughs> carpeting. Well, tra- carpeting. So. well, transfer off. <laughs> carpeting. You can do what I did, just transfer off. I just went back to my home server, went back to Crushbone. I well, like, I you know I wanted to play with my husband at the time, and oh, he yeah. really is a big PvPer. And so, so you're still there, and you're gonna be yeah. there. Yeah. I mean, we haven't played in a couple of years, seriously. But um, yeah, when we last left, I mean, that was still where our, our characters were. But and whatever. I, oh, God, I, I mm, just thinking about leveling up in that server was just awful. 
<laughs> anyway, so if anybody so please be okay because in September we're getting pandas. Yes, baby. we're getting pandas. <laughs> You're excited about the pandas? I love me some freaking pandas. <laughs> Mr. Pandaria, which has been in open beta for quite a while um, yes. for World of Warcraft, uh, has been announced today for September 25th. I have my collector's edition on reserve on Amazon. Um, you would better do it fast. Uh, I don't know if I have that or not. I know I, I got the game because I got the um, annual pass, but that doesn't mean I have the collector's edition, huh? Mr. Pandaria? Do you get that when you do the animal? I thought it was just Diablo that you got. Oh, you Diablo and then beta for Miss, but not the game. Right. So okay. I would... Then I'll just... Yeah, <laughs> I'm totally going to get the collector's edition because not only do you get a pet this time, mm -hmm. you get a special... Are you special? Oh, you Ew. locked up. Wait, so you I'm... get a special what? You locked up. Oh, you get... You've always gotten... Uh, but now you get a special mount as well. Oh, oh, well, that's nice. Am I totally lagging? Well, you were for a second, yeah. 